Gonzaga plays as good a non-conference yeah. as anybody. You look at this next upcoming season, you got UConn. You got the great uh, the Maui Classic. Um, you know, you've got at Kentucky. And the Kentucky one's interesting because Coach Few and Coach Calipari had the deal with Gonzaga Memphis years ago where they played it in the middle of their conference mm-hmm. season. That's the formula they went back to. That jumped out at me when that was announced through Kentucky's uh, social media a week or so back. Is there a non-conference you're most looking forward to? Is it the Kentucky? Which one um, it you know, that's a question that I will answer the first week because I want to see these guys play together, right? Because Gonzaga has made their life on continuity. They've made their life on chemistry, dudes that love each other and play together, right? Um, they have not all these years always been. A few of those teams were more talented than a mm-hmm. lot of the teams they've, they've played. But really... That's not been Gonzaga's M.O. for these 20 years. They're not always the most talented team. I can make the case there were teams in, down in Moraga that were more talented in some of those years that Gonzaga beat because they were a great team and chemistry and all of that. And you don't know when you assemble these players, right, if they're truly ready for the juggernaut of a schedule that Mark Few sets up every year. So I'm going to – you ask me that question in November when I see these guys all together. Now, I will tell you this. Nemhard, Ryan's going to make a huge difference. I, I think that he's cut out of the cloth of a Mark Few quintessential point guard, right? Make everybody better. He can provide some offense. He can get into the lane and get the ball to the right person like you. Uh, and so because of him, I think that this team could elevate to national Final Four stuff. And his coach few's best teams have always had two primary ball handler decision makers. <clears throat> it was Suggs and Nemhart. Yeah. It was Perkins, Nigel Williams, Goss, yeah. myself and Blake, Santangelo, Quentin Hall. And so this year's team, Nolan Hickman and, and Nemhart have that possibility to be a great duo like that. And I wanna I wanna spend some time talking about Nolan because he's the guy that my eyes are gonna be on most to begin this year. Because he took a lot of criticism. Yeah. He's been beat up right, over his couple of years at Gonzaga. And you can see the potential. He's a good player. Will he take the jump? He stayed. He's been loyal. Yeah. It needs to be rewarded. Yeah. I hope it's rewarded on the floor for him personally, and I hope the fan base rewards that as well. People forget Nolan Hickman was a five-star guy. He initially was, committed was to in Kentucky. Kentucky yeah. Right. Could have gone anywhere he wanted to in the country, and he came to Gonzaga, and he's still here in the days of NIL and the transfer portal. So. And what's interesting about that is he's only a junior. It's yeah. his third year. Yes. I have said this for years, yes. and this goes back to my career plan. Unless you're a complete outlier, it takes like a, like a Chet Holmgren. Yeah. It takes three years to get comfortable at the next level of play. College, it took me three years. Yeah. Two years gone at UW. Yeah, you were terrible. A redshirt year, there. and then it broke through. I was bad at UW. <laughs> but in the pros, it took me three years to get yeah. comfortable. Yeah. It's just a different yeah. game and a different and, jump. And this is his third year. Yeah. So I see a big jump in his future. And Danny's playing every day now alongside Ryan Emmard. That can only help. Yeah. Right? Because he sees a guy that can do it and has done it on a national level. So I think, I think I'm think i excited to see Nolan Hickman play. Um, ben Gregg, I think, is going to make a jump, really? too. I do. He's been working hard all summer. Uh, I think he's getting stronger, and I think he's going to shoot the <laughs> out of the three. And uh, I think he's going to stretch defenses. I think he's going to cause problems for people. And then, you know, the new guys, will will wait and see. With An- Anton coming back, they have the leadership. They've got the toughness, you know, somebody that's been there before. We'll just, you know, have to wait and see. And, and uh, that's a terrible answer, though, isn't it? I hate it when, when I'm doing an interview and people say, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, that's why you're here. Is well, to here's the thing, right? though, is you and I will we'll have yeah. conversations like this throughout Some, the season. More off camera, frankly, than on camera. Yeah, I mean, we have the off camera Because Dan's a little goofy if you haven't <laughs> figured that out yet. Well, we, I mean, we, have you seen his shoes? Will you put one of these up there? Like, What's I, wrong with these? Like, like what? What is that? Well, okay, give me a... a it's orange. What's wrong with orange? Besides the color? <laughs> like, what? Like, are those a Nike... What are those? These are... Are they... Nike Zoom All Outs. Yeah, they're good. I, I would buy another pair of these right now. How come? 
They're comfortable. You paid money for those. I did. Okay. I did. Hey, They're come on. Awful. Now, if we're going full disclosure on like wardrobe, I mean, <laughs> you wore you wear corduroys. Yeah, cords. and cord- comfortable cords. corduroys and running shoes. Yes, a, under it with a sport coat. Perfectly comfortable. Isn't I'm comfy, isn't there man. A, a I'm sense comfy. of professionalism you need to bring to the broadcast. Hey, group? those cords are like a hundred bucks. Oh, jeez. Come on now. <laughs> well, you overspent on those. I, I did. No, much. there's there's no doubt. I get a deal on them though. But, yeah. But anyways, um, same place you get your hair piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how's it looking? <laughs> 